Now I want to install a few Oracle homes, uh, database and grid infrastructure, let's say at least on O1. So uh, first things first, in my virtual environment, uh, I don't have any software. Okay, so like if I go to CD stage, there's no such directory. In fact, there's not even a U01. That's going to be where I'm going to install the software because it tends to be the default location for the installer as well as uh, the default for Oracle documentation and the courses and stuff like that. So first things first, I need to be root, make a directory U01, chone it so that Oracle O install owns it, and get out of there. Okay, so that's the first thing I need to do. Next thing I need to do is get the installers. Well, I've already extracted that to a directory on my C drive right here. Okay, so I've got the database directory, there's the run installer there, and I've got the grid infrastructure directory right there. Okay, so I've extracted it. Next thing I want to do is share that into my VM. So the quick way to do that is to go to settings on my VM, options tab, shared folders, and then always enable is good enough. We say add, and we're going to add that folder. So it's C share. I'm just calling it share. It's a, kind of a good name. I'm going to say make it read only because I really don't expect the VM to need to write out to, win, to my host. And we want to enable the share. Make sure that checkbox is hit. You say OK and look at this. It's automatically mounted. So if we go to MNT HGFS, you can see there's a subdirectory called share and inside there there's the stuff from my uh, host environment. Perfect. So the first thing I'm going to install, just to be fun and just to test my skills, is I'm going to do everything out of order. Okay, I'm going to install the database product first. Now we, we should know that that's actually not the right way to do things. We should install grid infrastructure first, configure it, get either Oracle Restart configured or CRS, Clusterware, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to do things backwards because the, for me to prep for the exam, I believe I need to try a much more, the more difficult paths possible. Okay. Now, the most difficult would be to manually extract the files from, uh, from the installer and manually place all the files. And I mean, come on, but you know, I'm assuming we will be allowed to use the Oracle Universal Installer because this is Oracle software. Now, uh, the absolute most difficult way to do this would be using a response file. Okay, so, and if that's the case, don't forget that we can find the response file examples inside the stage home, so where your software is, wherever you've extracted it, um, under a subdirectory called response, and there is the db underscore install dot response file or dot rsp file. Okay, so there it is, right there. And if you look at if you look inside the file, it's pretty well documented as to how to configure a response file. Okay, so that's not what I'm interested in doing. So let's go back here. I'm going to do an interactive install. I don't want that. We're only going to install the software. Single instance. English is good. Enterprise edition, if necessary, you know adjust your options here and the home the home I'm going to assume is the default location for almost like everything I've seen out there from Oracle and the base I'm going to use the default location notice all I had to do was create the u01 directory and make sure I have write permissions to it as Oracle user say next or inventory same location as the default and my in my uh, my OS DBA and OS Opera Groups. Now I am using an old Oracle validated RPM, so some of these things might not match. So, especially the, the kernel parameters. And also you can see here some of my packages are missing. So when I did the install, I said we weren't going to worry about it. Well, now we have to worry about it. So, so first I insert the DVD and it auto mounts for me. That's awesome. And it's in this ugly directory here, Enterprise, that's actually the name of the DVD. And what I'm going to do is take this name right there and edit my yum repository. Oops, not the directory, 
the uh, CD-ROM here. Now, I think this is not going to work exactly the way I want, but that's okay. And I want this to go into uh, server. Now, I think I need to escape these out, these spaces. Okay. Now, let's see if that worked. No. Then we need to quote it. Okay, so since I tried to uh, quote off these ugly spaces in here, I'm just going to do this. Uh, media, enterprise, Linux, blah, blah, blah. Some directory called OEL. And this is all operating stuff, so operating system stuff. So presumably uh, there will be none of these types of challenges on the exam. And there we are. Okay, so uh, my repo is good. And what I want to do is I want to install these RPMs. Um, now this to me feels more like a sysadmin exam now. So um, lib AIO devel and Unix ODBC, Unix ODBC devel. So it would be unfair in my opinion for uh, uh, Oracle to test us on how to get RPMs and set up repositories and stuff like that. Okay, so this to me is all operating system type stuff. But this, you see, these ones are not fixable by the auto, the, the fix up script. But if I click fix and check again, it's going to generate a fix up script to fix my kernel parameters, which I can just run like so. Okay, so now we're good, we go okay, and we should be good for the prerequisites. There we are. And we wait. So we just run the root scripts. And we're good. OK, we're done.